Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. The agenda of the regular board meeting, President Board of Trustees, Village of Burnham, Cook County, Illinois. Today is May 14, 2024. I will ask the clerk to call a roll, please. Trustee Cass. Trustee Hodges? Here. Trustee Garcia? Here. Trustee Greer? Here. Trustee Richardson? Here. Trustee Kramer? We are formed present because we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and could be leader present for the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Th
we are all working together to improve our students' scores. But I think that you'll find if you if you survey uh, some of the surrounding schools in our area in general that our scores will be pretty similar across uh, across the districts, and it's not necessarily targeted just to Burnham. I think it's targeted to, again to maybe all of Cook County and in the surrounding South uh, Cook suburbs here that are right next to Chicago. <laughs> Well, I had a follow-up. So you think it's mostly because it's Hispanics and Blacks? Because when I searched Village of Burnham Elementary Schools, mm -hmm. another result came out in Connecticut and the same with the same name. And this school, this elementary school in Connecticut has um, like 79% proficient in math and like 85% proficient in reading. Mm -hmm. So the pandemic didn't really affect them as much as I guess it would be to us. So you think it's because we have too many multiple languages in one classroom? Well, if I may interject, let me make this question would be more focused on the school board and our school setting. Um, this is, um, as you know, the village. We're not in the crime to have an indirect impact on the school. You know, so are there any other public questions? It, it, it is pertaining to this, but it, it's a quick quick comment you know, that I had here. Um, Andrew Johnson, I would just like to say this, that I think in any area that uh, where you see, you know, uh, low proficiency and stuff, the biggest reason is you can't get support from the parents. Uh, you cannot get it. Uh, you know, I, I, have, I have been in the school system a while, you know, I was in there a while before I came back the last four or five years, and nothing you can do about the home situation. And unfortunately, uh, a lot of parents, whatever, they don't want to be bothered with their kids. They don't want to be bothered. That's the problem. Uh, thank you. Well said. Yeah. Exactly. <coughs> uh, Josephine Ross, and I hope I'm not kind of jumping ahead of the mayor, but I just like to welcome Pro Trustee Brenda Greer back. Uh, she's the mom of the Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other public comments? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just real quickly. <coughs> Mayor, I got a couple of letters here for you in the village and for also for the police department. And I'll just kind of take a quick moment to kind of read those in general. Thank you. But well, I want to thank uh, Mayor Polk and the esteemed village trustees. Um, this letter here we're writing on behalf of the entire school district to extend our deepest gratitude for the delightful lunch provided by Capri uh, during Teacher Appreciation Week. Your thoughtful gesture not only filled our stomachs but also warmed our hearts. It's in these moments of recognition and appreciation that truly make a difference in the morale and the motivation of our teaching staff. Knowing that our efforts are valued by our local leadership means a great deal to us. Moreover, I want to express our gratitude for your continued cooperation and support in mentoring our young students. Your involvement in their growth and development goes well beyond words. It sets a positive example and inspires both our students and our educators to strive for excellence. So please convey your sincere appreciation to everyone involved in organizing the Teacher Appreciation Lunch and for your ongoing commitment to our educational community. Your dedication to fostering a nurturing environment for learning is deeply valued and greatly appreciated. Thank you for all that you do for our schools, our teachers, and our students. And then also being that this um, is police week, it's being observed this week from May 12th through uh, May 18th, I wanted to take a moment to express our gratitude for the outstanding service you provide to our service and our school. Dedication to ensuring the safety and well-being of our citizens is commendable. Your presence in our community brings a sense of security and peace to all of us, especially our students, our faculty, and staff. We have always valued the cooperation and support extended by the police department. The professionalism, responsiveness, and friendly demeanor have always made a significant impact on our school environment. Mm -hmm. Your commitment to building positive relationships with our students has not gone unnoticed and has contributed greatly to fostering a sense of trust and respect within our school community. So during police week, we want to take an opportunity to thank each and every member of the Burman, Burnham Police Department for their tireless efforts, sacrifices, and dedication to keeping our community safe. The service does not go unnoticed or unappreciated, and we are grateful for everything you do. Just know that you have our full support and appreciation, not just during police week, but every day of the year, and we look forward to continuing our partnership with you to create a safe and thriving community for all. Yeah. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. And we welcome you. We're glad we could offer some assistance. So that means if I get in your class, I get an A, right? <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other public comments? Are yes. Any other public comments? Right here. Relax. I'm John Hayduk. Um That before and after pictures you have in the of the house and the flyer you just sent out. I'm assuming it was a Burnham owned property. Uh, I'm just curious how much money did Burnham make off of that? I'm assuming we made money off of it. And I was just curious too, when and why did Burnham even go into the real estate business? When did they? Uh, secondly, also on that flyer was the quarterly report that you said you're working on. Uh, I remember two or three years ago, I asked for a monthly financial report and you said no. But you also said that you'd give me a quarterly financial report. I didn't like that, but I says, okay, we'll deal with that. Well, you gave me your word that you give it to me. And it's three years later, still waiting for it. So, so much for your word. Um, also, our streets on Green Bay are being done right now by a grant we received. Good for you. Good to hear it. Um, you said Burnham received four or five sealed bids. That was great to hear. You said like 70 grand was the difference between the lowest and the highest bid. So you saved us 70 grand there. Now I'm wondering, concerning the garbage contract, it's also about 200 grand, the same price as the Green Bay is being done for. Uh, I'm wondering, why, did you require, why didn't you require sealed bids for that? Uh, you just gave the contract uh, home of disposal without, without bids. Uh, that may have saved us another 70 grand. Um, seems to me that it's got uh, kickback written all over it, unless you can explain it, why you didn't have to go through the process. Um, lastly, about our audits. April 30th is the end of every fiscal year. Three fiscal years have now passed since our last audit. Last meeting, when I asked you about it, you says, I'm not exactly sure where the auto report is right now. I said to myself, uh-oh, here we go again. Um, I remember when the last clerk was arrested back in 2013, saw a Tribune article, they asked you about the, the clerk being arrested. You said, I had no idea. And I'm thinking, oh boy, beautiful. I hear Dalton also, their last audit they had was 2021. Last meeting I called you, Tiffany Henya to Burnham. Here we go again. Um, now back then, Mr. Polk, you, Cap, I believe Richardson and Greer were on the uh, finance committee back then, 2013. And Nancy, the clerk, was arrested. She seems like the fall guy. There's no way in heck she could have been alone. You guys, how you guys didn't know about that, I have no idea. But Chavez, you might be wanna you might wanna be Larry and watch your back because you just may be the fall guy in this one. There's no explanation why we haven't had an audit that long. Um, if we were doing so well, the 22 and 23 audits would be done. You'd be bragging about them as you should be, and me, I wouldn't be here tonight talking about it. So, Mr. Polk and you puppets, anything you guys like to respond to me? Please feel free to. Thank you. Uh, are there any other public comments? Are there any other public comments? I'll ask for a motion to close the meeting to the public. I'll make the motion to close the meeting to the public. So the motion will by Trustee Richardson to close the meeting to the public because we have a second, please. Second. And second by Trustee Clipper. We'll take the roll. Trustee Hodges? Yes. Trustee Garcia? Yes. Trustee Greer? Yes. Trustee Richardson? <coughs> yes. Trustee Clipper? Yes. The motion closed. Thank you. Um, the uh, as it was mentioned some time ago, the audit is still in review. It is still being worked on. Once we have that, it will be available. But we do not have it yet, and we cannot give something that we don't have. Um, if, once it's done, then it, then it will be available. Um, as far as the, um, um, the house goes, um, that's um, no the homeward contract. That I mean, we was not required to uh, to remit that. And we also looked at some of the other towns and the prices that they were offering, and different people had submitted some stuff that we reviewed, and so it was in the best interest of us to stay where we were. I'm asking why you didn't have a sealed bid process. That's uh, all. So you could have saved so much money. What okay. you did with the street repair was great, Mr. Polk. No, that was great. No, no, your time is up now, thank you. I know that, but you uh, won't let me talk when it's open to me. I didn't say anything while you were talking. You're telling me okay. to shut up. All right. You didn't say nothing during my three minutes? Um, well, I would like to say <laughs> that uh, people 
we asking people not to jump ships and things over on um, you know, right off the of Green Bay behind old condos. We got people that's dumping back there. So we're gonna have to put up um, you know, some type of surveillance to see if we can catch the people. And we haven't had people coming out of there and they told the police that they have permission to dump back there. But first of all, they don't even know who owned the property. So there's no way they can have permission. And I wouldn't know if I hadn't researched it. Um, and also, of the Southland region, the Mayor Black Caucus Group, of which I'm a member of, is offering a scholarship for students, undergraduate students. Um, a $500 scholarship. The application is on the Village of Burnham's website. They have to write an essay of 500 words and it will be submitted to the committee. And uh, then we'll go from there on that. So, the few, uh, July the 1st, before July the 1st. And the last thing, according to the Cook County Assessor's Office, I mean, one third of the people in Cook County, the property owners, are not claiming their home exemptions on their property. And that cost of taxes would be more money, but they're not claiming that exemption. But one third of the property owners in Cook County are not, I mean, are not claiming the property, uh, I mean, a home exemption. Uh, thank you, clerk. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. The post office will be closed on Monday, May 27th for Memorial Day. So that is all I have there. Yeah, thank you, Clerk Lee, for the report. Public education, health care, welcome to the Good evening, everyone. Burn a fire and medical reading. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Discussion of consideration on and taking action to approve or not approve on hiring Emily Marie Marsh for the position of community service officer for the village of Burnham Police Fire Department. Burnham Police Department. <laughs> well, are there any, uh, is there any questions from the board members? Little West. I make a motion <coughs> to approve the hiring of M Ms. Emily Marie Mart for the position of Community Service Officer for the Village of Burnham Police Department. So there's a motion on the floor by Trustee Greer to have Ms. Marsh as a Community Service Officer. So we could, uh, could we have a second? Can we explain what the Community Service Officer does uh, compared to uh, residence officers? Well, a community service officer is kind of like the ESDA, <coughs> and we are not allowed to arrest anyone. Mm -hmm. right? They are not allowed to carry a gun. But if we had, um, say, if there was an accident in the street, I mean, rather than tying the police department up for an hour or two hours, and we could assign them to do it, the police could be available for more. And for more serious offenses, for example. And in town, they help us out with the front desk over there, right? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. And they serve as dispatchers and uh, they help us out in that. So, from time to time, we will continue to hire community service also because they're part time, so we only pay them for when they work. So, it's not like they, they work in five days a week. I get in trouble for saying that. I proceed as a. Burn a fire and medical report. What is that? No, we need a second. Okay. I'll second. Okay. Second. Okay. Okay. Then the clerk will call the roll. Trustee Hodges? Yes. Trustee Garcia? Yes. Trustee Greer? Yes. Trustee Richardson? Yes. Trustee Claybrook? Yes. Thank you, motion passed. Proceed, Trustee Greer. Burn a fire and medical report. This was the month of April 2024. Fire call, there were seven. There were six during the day, and there was one at night. They had two investigations, one special service call, a CO detector, automobile accident, mm -hmm. and two wires down, two wires that were down. For the MLS calls, there were 46. <coughs> there were 30 during the day and 16 during the night. So they were big, MLS, they were very busy. Cicadas are beginning to emerge in the in our Southland area. They look like a grasshopper to me. <coughs> and they make a loud sound. The loud sound that you hear is the male cicada singing to attract their female counterparts. 
after a, after a decade of, of being dormant. Cicadas make its appearance every 17 years. They spend most of their lives underground. They're feeding off the sap of the uh, tree roots. Cicadas are a valuable food source to birds. Cicadas add nutrition, nutrients to the soil as they decompose. The way to quiet cicadas, if you really want to quiet them, because they're very noisy little creatures, you can spray them with a mouth of, if you can get them, you can spray them with a mouth of vegetable oil, mm. and they won't be able to make that noise. Cicadas chirp at night to draw the females towards them when they want to mate. The cicadas do not sting nor bite. They don't have the appropriate mouth part. And that but they live for three to four weeks. And they come every um every every seven seventeen years. So this is the year. There's a um Well, there's a health care for immigrants, and if you know of any immigrants, <coughs> this is some very valuable information for you. They must live in Illinois. They must be 42 years old or older. And there's a number that, that you can call. Uh, the health care, it includes doctor and hospital care, lab tests, rehabilitation services, mental health, substance, um, use disorder, dental and vision services, and prescription drugs. So it's very um, good information for the immigrants. And you must have a passport, a driver's license, proof of address, and some more information. But if you'd like a copy of this um, information to pass on, if you may know someone, please feel free to see me after the meeting. A blood drive will be Monday, May the 20th, here right at the Village Hall, 2.15 p.m. to 6.30. Appointment is preferred, but walk-ins are welcome. Donate, you do, if you donate your blood, you have a chance to win a lawnmower. Helpful hints, make sure to eat a healthy meal and drink plenty of water for, before donating. Our annual garage sale this year is July the 20th it's at the community center. The time this year will be 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. You must have your own setup. So that's, um, oh, the last thing I'd just like to mention is the village of Burnham and the members of MBETS Post 43 have joined together to get it, to create a memorial to the veteran and to help offset the cost. Our, we have a rich fundraiser which will help construct and maintain this memorial for years to come. So we're asking everyone to participate. Let's build this um, memorial. It's going to be great and it's something that we can have and look at, enjoy for years to come. If you'd like more information, please see Trustee Richardson and uh, Trustee Hodges, Trustee Cap, Trustee, Trustee Claybrook for more information. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Trustee Blair, for your report and that information. So, the words of Bill and Trustee Claybrook. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, first thing I have. Um, Street repairs on uh, 142nd and Green Bay and back and uh, went over that other day as well. Also, public works we've been out um, filling the potholes in the alley, but uh, due to rain and the forecast, the next couple of days we will get to them. Uh, I'll talk to Miss Jackie today, so we will uh, make our rounds throughout the village. Uh, the street sweeper was out also. Um, the next thing I have from the American Public Works Association. It's, um, it's a form that just shows the top public work projects in Illinois. Um, the Calumet River Bridge is rehabilitation. It's in Chicago. It's uh, a bridge. 
under construction. Yeah, pre-construction, I'm sorry, pre-construction. And the federal funding for that was $144 million. Then you had the Arthur Injunction Rail Rehabilitation, it's a railroad. It's also pre-construction, and the federal funding for that was $70 million. And then you have the City of Marshall Sewer Improvement, um, the sanitation. And as, as of February 2023, it's also uh, pre-construction, and the federal funding for that, for that was uh, for $2.1 million. And I'm going to just uh, read about the uh, Calumet River Bridges rehabilitation and show where it's located and uh, what it does. Um, this funding will support the rehabilitation for four of uh, four historic bridges, the 92nd Street Ewing Avenue Bridge, 95th Street Bridge, 100 of 100th Street Bridge and 106th Street Bridge. These bridges are critical components of the Illinois International Port, which is an international hub, and the Illinois Waterway, allowing freight access via the waterway between Lake Michigan and the Gulf of Mexico. The bridges also function as an interconnected network, providing access to crucial industries and local jobs and economic stability in the underserved South Chicago and Calumet area. That was for the uh, Calumet River Bridge uh, rehabilitation. Also, National Public Works Week is May 19th through the 25th, 2024. Um, we'll be doing something special for the guys. Also, if you uh, see the guys out during that week, you know, just give them a thumbs up or whatever. And uh, we'll be doing something on May 23rd uh, with, with Jeff, Trustee Jeff. And, uh, is everything at Burnham School, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, Where we'll be doing it at the uh, Public Works building. Yeah. And um, anything, anything? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I'm really excited about that. Again, we've been working this year with the school, mentoring with the kids, and getting them um, acclimated to different careers. And uh, the great thing to do is work with the good people of Burnham who do different great things we did. Uh, last quarter, we worked with the police officers we had, and the fire department. I really appreciate it. They came by and we did a mental circle with the seven, eighth grade boys. And this year, I mean, this, in this quarter, um, we're going to work with the public works department and the trustees and for the whole seven, eighth grade class. And so they all be there together. Um, <coughs> some food, talking to the, the, the people that trust public work and our trustees and different professionals. Uh, Burnham, uh, so you want to come by and volunteer for that. Um, you're more than welcome to come by. So I, I can't wait. It's going to be a good day, May 23rd. And then we're going to have a couple of the, uh, pieces of equipment out just to show the students uh, how they work and uh, the functionality of anything. It's a nice thing. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Thank you, Professor Kidbrook. And I would also like to add on the Public Works uh, Committee that. Um, you know, we have these trees that drop all these pellets in the street all the time, and every time it rains, and wash it right down to the drain. So, we would ask the people would uh, kind of start doing like we used to do. You know, people used to go out and sweep around the curb, so that wouldn't that wouldn't upset us too much. You know, people would kind of start doing that again. That would help out a lot with all those pellets. And if you if you look at the street after rain. And there's so many of those pellets there that the water can't even go down sometimes. Mm -hmm. so, so we need some assistance with that. Well, certain streets, we cannot sweep the streets on both sides because the streets are too narrow. So we come on over the bridge. I mean, Saginaw, Marquette, Manistee, the people do not have driveways mainly, and they can't alternate as opposed to where I live. Almost everybody have a driveway, so that's the difference. So, we so would appreciate it if we can get some assistance with that going forward. I have one more thing. Yeah. Um, Jeff, do we have a time? Did we um? Yeah, have a time? Did we? Right now, it's one o'clock. It was. I know it's correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll verify. Yeah, we'll verify. It's about one o'clock. They come in at one o'clock. We good. Let's put lunch. It's gonna start lunch time. It will be finished. At so two o'clock. So like two. Yeah. So yeah. that way the kids get back and get home right. safely or to tutor. Yes. In the ordinance resolution plan, Trustee Garcia. Good evening. Good evening. Discussion of consideration of and taking action to approve or not approve ordinance number 
0-002, an ordinance amending chapter one, general provisions by amending section one to 10, general penalties, and by adding a new section, section one to 19, collection fees and costs, and by amending article eight, administration procedures for parking, standing and vehicular compliance violations, section 94, there are 604 schedule of fines and penalties of the Code of Ordinances of the Village of Burnham. Does anybody have any questions about this? Mm -hmm. What does it mean? Okay. Steve, would you like to give a quick um, briefing on this? Mm -hmm. A sale and hope to understand it. Want me to do it? Yeah. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an ordinance that's going to update our administrative proceedings that we have here in the village of Burnham. It's also going to eliminate uh, about two thirds of the cost of, of uh, having and holding those proceedings. Uh, right now we're in a three tier system where individuals have to appear or are given an opportunity three times to appear in court. Uh, every time we have to mail out notices, every time they have to be prepared, they have to be sent out, and they get three bites at the app. And this will streamline that procedure down to one appearance only. And in addition to that, by eliminating two thirds of the mailing costs, and the preparation costs, and the backroom costs, and anything like that, uh, it eliminates uh, all those hidden costs that are assistant uh, with it. It also uh, allows our collection process to, uh, if the fine is entered for $100, previously our collection companies would take their fee from that $100. This ordinance now allows our collection company, a new collection company, to take it and add their fee on top of the $100 fine. So if we find somebody for uh, for example, a $250 fine for handicap parking, uh, we would lose part of that money. Now we'll get the full $250 and the collection company gets their share added on to the top. And uh, it's just going to streamline the process. It's going to increase our uh, revenue somewhat. And uh, uh, it's uh, just going to bring us up to the 21st century. So that's what we're doing. And I have to uh, give recognition to Steve Powers in the back room there. He's sitting there. Would you stand up, Steve, please? Uh, Steve has been working for the past nine months, almost a year. In July will be a year that we've been working on this, trying to get things together and, and move things along. And every time we try getting close to it, something else gets in our way. But we finally got it together. and. Uh, there's 124 places in our village code where the word fine appears. So we had to look at and had to revamp the whole thing. So anyway, thank you very much. If any questions, I'll be happy to entertain any questions from the Board of Trustees. All right, thank you. Thank you. And for those who don't know, there's a lot of work here in the village of Brown. There's a lot goes on, a lot goes on. So people. I mean, people come here complaining about different things, they have no idea. They have no idea at all. And God knows that. They have no idea. None whatsoever. I proceed. A motion to approve ordinance number 2024-0002, an ordinance amending chapter one, general provisions, <coughs> by amending section one to 10, general penalties, and by adding a new section, <coughs> Section 1 to 19, collection fees and costs, and by amending our Article 8, administrative procedures for parking, standing, and vehicular compliance violations. Section 94 604, schedule of fines and penalties of the Code of Ordinances of the Village of Vernon. Trustee Garcia makes a motion that we would uh, pass this ordinance number 2024, with that we would so can we have a second? Please? Second. Second by Trustee Claybrook for the project alone. Trustee Hodges? Yes. Trustee Garcia? Yes. Trustee Greer? Yes. Trustee Richardson? Yes. Trustee Claybrook? Yes. One motion passed. Proceed, Trustee Garcia. Discussion of consideration of and taking action to approve or not approve a new business, Auto Empire, 
would be located at 14525 Torrance Avenue. The business would be a used car dealership. Are the representatives here for that? Yes. <coughs> Stanford. Okay. Okay, so um, well, a couple of questions we read through the information. So about what year a car will be do you think? <coughs> How new will they be? Pardon me? I said, about what year model cloud do you think these would be? Right, like 2010 and up. 2010 and up, yeah. And so will they be sold as is? No. Or will they have any type of warranty? Uh, uh, warranties will be offered. Do you have an idea what that is? Um, sometimes, depending on the price of the vehicle, um, it goes on the mileage that they purchased the car at. And, uh, the price, but sometimes within the finance and the warranty will be like 24 uh, months, 24,000 miles. Okay. Mm -hmm. My last question I think was that uh, we do have like a, a limit of the mileage on the car that you would not have available, or was it 50,000 or 100,000? Well, the Secretary of State, I mean, there's like a limit at 150,000. I mean, it's just pretty much buy and beware. But I don't sell vehicles with uh, 150 miles an hour. So everything will have to be within the parameters of getting financed. So um, to answer your question, I would try to keep it maybe 150 and less. Okay, board. Um, you were on uh, 6707 South State? Yes, I've been there for Currently 14 years. Or, location. 6707 South State. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What um, location? Is this a bigger location for you? Mm -hmm. or just, uh, so that's well, with, you the, with the uprise in Uber drivers and DoorDash customers, mm -hmm. I mean, people need cars. So um, 67 in state, we normally keep 65 to 70 cars. But with yeah. this opportunity here, we can expand and probably offer 50 more and maybe you know, offer quality vehicles to burn them in surrounding areas. So will you be leaving six or seven street and moving here? No, I, I, in as, I, as I stated in the proposal, it'll be an expansion opportunity. So it'd be two locations. If um, a person <coughs> purchased a car from you, mm -hmm. their warranty is up, but they're having problems with that car. So they're bringing it back to you. What type of consideration will you give them? Well, I mean, your integrity would fall in. I mean, you can kind of lead them in the right direction. I mean, we're affiliated with mechanics that could help them out. But I mean, buying a vehicle, you obviously you can't warranty it for the life of the car. I mean, it's mm -hmm. almost like you took your wife for better or for worse, but you can offer them something if it does go beyond that point. But as far as I'm concerned, I stand behind my vehicles. There's no like brake light warranty. If you walk out of there making complaints with me. Like I said, I had a good standing with the Secretary of State for 14 years. If you got a complaint with them, they know about it. You won't be in business that way. That's a used car deal. I understand. So you will try to step to work with your customers. Absolutely. And that's very important. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then, I mean, in this day and age, you don't want to get hurt over you just got to fight for, you know, just try to work with the person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the access, so the people that you think that they all know they have to go through the alley to access your business? I've seen some cars stop right there on the corner and that's better not say what we have. Well, with the owner, I, I have a lease with option to buy, and he said that he's working with IDOT to try to get the curb cut. I don't know where he's at with the process of that. I don't know if he has to come through the village or I, I that was going to be any time soon. Um, okay. Where's the location? 14525 uh, uh, South Torrance. Mm -hmm. Now, the only uh, other option would be as far as parking. I mean, I try to uh, get a neighborly relationship with the gas station. I see that you put like a fence up. I don't know what kind of relationship he had with the previous owner there, but that's kind of like a, a, a eyesore there. You, I mean, I guess before it seems like they used to park in a gas station and walk over, but I mean, if, you know, I try to talk to him, maybe offer him um, a lease where my customers can park there and come right into the lot. I mean, that would be more suffice. Well, the fence is leaning there, maybe. Yeah, I, yeah I, 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 would, <coughs> I actually want to help him out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any uh, plans for security over there? Um, just surveillance and I mean, uh, I mean, I can't put a fence up. I mean, the fence is 
It's just the post right now. So. One another requirement is that you keep it clean for you know it's a lot of garbage that flies coming from uh, from west to east. Mm -hmm. Always and actually, we did a preliminary. We did a preliminary cleanup with the gravel there. Oh, you did to take, take all the weeds out. You did, so, yeah. You did. And I sent word to you that it was a little bit unlevel and it had some water in one of the spots. Yeah, you got yeah. your right. Okay. Okay. All right. See. Make a motion to, to approve uh, the new business our uh, empire that's lo that's going to be located at one forty five twenty five Torrance Avenue. Um, the business will be a used car dealership. Yes. Trustee Hassan? Yes. Trustee Garcia? Yes. Trustee Greer? Yes. Trustee Richardson? Yes. Trustee Kuyper? Yes. Welcome to the village of Thank you. Thank you. How long did I take? Is that it, Trustee? Yeah. 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 We need to have work. Discussion of, consideration of, and taking action to approve or not approve on authorizing the payment of this month's bill. Okay, so I'm going to ask for a motion to approve the authorization of this month's bill. So. Okay. I make a motion to approve the payment of this month's bill. And that, uh, do we have a second to that motion, Peter? Second. Second by Trustee Hudson. Trustee Hodges? Yes. Trustee Garcia? Yes. Trustee Richardson? Yes. Trustee Clayton? Yes. Motion passed, thank you. Uh, Public utilities, Trustee Richardson? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Cubs, the Citizens Utility Board is offering a seminar on solar, navigating solar. It's going to be held at the Lansing Public Library. That's located at 2750 Indiana Avenue in Lansing, Illinois. And they will be uh, discussing or explaining the advantages of different solar programs and incentives and why clean energy is more affordable and reliable and how policies make like the Climate and Equitable Jobs Act and the Inflation Reduction Act benefits consumers. So if anyone is interested, you can call the Lansing Public Library and register. But this is taking place Thursday, May 23rd, from 6 to 7 p.m. And it's done this solar. That's it. Yeah, thank you, Trustee Mr. Before you report and that information, uh, Department of Recreation, Trustee Hodges. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, so we in, we in the season of uh, summer jobs and summer camps, and I wanted to give you guys a heads up. Some summer camp things we got coming up. So we have a free summer camp sponsored by the Thornton Township. Uh, the Thornton Township, the Thornton Township Summer Enrichment Program. Uh, you want to know more about that summer camp? It's going to be uh, this summer. If you want to know more information about that, that'll be at thorntownship.com. Oh we give them a call at 708-596-3207. For that same program, though, they are also hiring uh, for a jobs for that summer camp, and also they're actually hiring for jobs all for Thornton Township. And those are, um, you guys should call the same number with the same website, thorntownship.com. They have some good summer jobs uh, for the teens, kids, and anybody looking for a job for the summer. Um, same number, 708 596 3206 or thorntownship.com. Also, um, Kai Memorial Park District, they're also hiring this summer, which will go to their website, which is mycmpd.com, or you can call their number, 708 868 2530, to get a summer job with Kai Memorial Park District, too. They also are, they're also, we offer a summer program, but they, that one is paid. So the Thorn Township one is free. But the Cabo Boy Park District Summer Camp will be uh, $135 a week. Now, um, you give them a phone or you give them a call if you have an um, economic hardships and they may be able to work it out with you. But I'm going to give you their phone number, which is 708-868-2530. That, that program from June 10th to August 16th. 
Um, that's kind of one of the park district. Um, Can you repeat the number one? The number is 708-868-2530. And, and that's for their summer jobs. And the same number you can call to see if you can get you a job with some Kamen Memorial Park District. Also, um, um, we're working with the Kamen Memorial Park District, with the mayor and the village of Burnham to bring some summer music festes to summer this summer. So right now we have the Gospel Fest, which is scheduled for July 27th, right there at the Village Hall. It's gonna be a great day of some great inspirational music, um, uh, July 27th. Uh, the time, we will have a time in the upcoming day of you guys, the time, we're trying to get that time right in the afternoon. It's going to be a good day, all right? Um, I think I'm going to go, that's, 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 that's what I got. Excuse me, you said gospel music? Gospel Fest, Summer Gospel Fest. That's going to be July 27th. All right, so that's it for right now, man. Okay, trustee. Trustee Hyde, thank you for that report. And, uh, Cottage Park uh, has been underwater for years. And Trustee Hodges and I have been in some discussion with the Park District that maybe we need to find an alternate location for it. So we're going to be looking around the village and uh, uh, we're going to have to talk to some of the residents in uh, an area of being considerate and uh, make sure mm -hmm. that uh, people will kind of be in agreement with it. Uh, uh, and sometimes a kid make up more noise than some of the people want to hear. So we want to try to accommodate everybody. And the kids are part of the community as well. So we want to be able to offer them something uh, as well in addition. So the park has been underwater, like I said, for years. And we just can't quite seem to let me get a solution to that. And it's been a water of regret. A couple of years ago, for a hundred thousand dollars to um, put some valve swells in there to absorb the water and whatnot, but <coughs> they didn't feel that it was worth it. They didn't want to uh, give us the money, so so I mean, that was the end of that. So can I say something about that? Yeah. Uh, one thing too, though, uh, usually used to dry in the summer. It doesn't even dry anymore. So it's almost uh, and it's, it's actually it's a comment, but also it's a thing that the kids. They don't want to play there no more because it's so wet, and so they decide to set up a hoop literally in front of my house. And because they trust the others, you know, they feel safe enough for the dudes to be out there, but they don't understand how cars would hit them. And so that's why we have to come with a plan to work this out. So we are working hard with uh, the more the partners to see if we can do some alternative things. In the meantime, we can see if we can get some of the boys who, who do like playing basketball. And I got a couple people I'm gonna thank. Uh, Larry, he's been a really great coach to them. They love the game, but we wanna make sure they have a safe space to do that. And so we're working hard to get that done. Um, also, I wanna say one, one other thing too. It, it's one of our earlier points. I, I forgot to say that, but I've witnessed the people over there at Burnham School. They work really hard with those kids. Um, they do a really good job over there. I go over there. To hate it on. I want to say thank you for the work you guys are doing over there. Um, and one thing we can do as a village, even to help, even help out with some of those numbers, is that we can support them. They do lots of fundraisers over there. You come by to the fundraiser, say hi, meet some of the teachers, meet some of the good people working over there. We got some good people in the room right now that work over there to the school that do some really good work over there. So the more we work as connected as a community to make these things better. Maybe the parents will come in and they see us working together. So that's one thing I did want to say. So thanks again, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you, Trustee Hodges, for that report and that information. Do we have any presentation of petitions, and communication, memorial, and rest conferences? I'd like to ask for a moment of silence. We had three people that uh, passed away last week Mr. Gary McBay from Burnham Avenue, I mean, Ms. McGuire from 143 and Gensley, and Ms. McLean, and also from 100. Okay, thank you. Um, do we have any unfinished business? Do we have any new business? Hmm. If not, then I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Good night. Make a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn by Trustee Pickles to adjourn. Can we have a second? 
Trustee Hodges? Yes. Trustee Garcia? Yes. Trustee Greer? Yes. Trustee Richardson? Yes. Trustee Cleveland? Yes. Motion has been adjourned. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.